Chair. I welcome members to the 30th meeting in 2014 of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee and as always ask members to switch off mobile phones. We have apologies from Margaret McCulloch. Agenda item one is a decision on taking business in private. It's proposed that we take item eight in private. This is consideration of a draft report on instruments considered during the first quarter of the parliamentary year 2014-15. Does the committee agree to take item eight in private, please? Thank you. Members may also note that in line with previous decisions of the committee, items six and seven will be taken in private. Agenda item two is instruments subject to affirmative procedure. The Public Bodies Joint Workings Scotland Act 2014 Modifications Order 2014 Draft. Article 2.6 inserts the new text immediately after the words section 1.4d in section 59d rather than inserting expressly on a new line or as a new sub-paragraph. The committee may consider the amendment of the primary legislation in this instance may cause confusion to the reader. Does the committee agree to draw the instrument to the attention of the Parliament on reporting ground H as the formal or meaning of the amendment to section 59D of the Act made in Article 2, 6 of the order could be clearer. Agreed. Thank you. No points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Land Register of Scotland, Automated Registration, etc. Regula Regulations 2014 draft. Is the committee content with this instrument? Thank you. Agenda item three then is instruments subject to negative procedure and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Act of Sederant Commissary Business Amendment 2014 SSI 2014-265. Is the committee content with this instrument please? Agenda item four is instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the United Nations Sanctions Revocations Order 2014 SSI 2014-27, sorry SI. 2014-2711, nor on the Landfill Tax Scotland Act 2014, Commencement Number 1 Order 2014, SSI 2014-277, nor on the Land and Buildings Transaction Tax Scotland Act 2013, Commencement Number 1 Order 2014, SSI 2014-279. Is the committee content with those instruments, please? Thank you. Agenda item five, Prisoners Control of Release Scotland Bill. The purpose of this item is for the committee to consider the delegated powers in the bill at stage one. The committee is invited to agree the questions it wishes to raise with the Scottish Government on the delegated powers in the bill. It's suggested that these questions are raised in written correspondence. The committee will have a report, an opportunity to consider the responses at a future meeting before a draft report is considered. Section 3.2 provides that Scottish Ministers may by order bring Section 1 and Section 2 of the Bill into force on an appointed day. Section 3.3 provides that a commencement order may include transitional, transitory and saving provision. The Delegated Powers Memorandum states that an example of how this power may be used will be to disapply the application of the provisions in Section 1 of the Bill to any offenders sentenced before the day of commencement. Paragraph 37 of the policy memorandum states that the reforms will affect prisoners serving times, sorry, the reforms will not affect prisoners serving sentences at the time the relevant provisions are brought into force. Given the statement in the policy memorandum, does the committee therefore agree to ask the Scottish Government why it is appropriate that provision to that effect is not made on the face of the bill, but is better left to provision by order under section 3.3? And how alternatively might this power be exercised? The exercise of the power in section 3.3 may have substantive effects on certain individuals because it could further define which prisoners will be affected by section 1 in particular, but also section 2. Does the committee agree to ask the Scottish Government to explain why either the negative or affirmative procedures would not be appropriate for the parliamentary scrutiny of this power, or whether the Scottish Government could agree to lodge an amendment at stage 2 of the bill to adjust the procedure? And if accordingly a higher level of scrutiny ought to apply, negative or affirmative, how would the Scottish Government assess which higher level would be appropriate? Thank you. That completes item five and I move this meeting into private. Thank you.